small note about the covariance matrix of a Gaussian distribution. So, we again the slides are from Dr. Christopher Bishop's text PRML. Um, so, you are all familiar right now with the uh, univariate Gaussian where you know the probability density function is, uh, is given by some normalizing constant and exponential x minus mu squared by sigma squared. Uh, for, for multivariate Gaussian then we had this in the exponent the terms I am just writing down the terms in the exponent where we had x minus mu of x and then uh, we had the inverse of the covariance matrix and here again x and mu are vectors depending on the number of dimension that, uh, that you are operating in. Okay. Now, if you take this covariance matrix, okay, of course, it's de it's it is defined as the expectation of this quantity that is your covariance matrix and it is actually if you have d, d dimensions capital D dimensions then if x is a d dimensional variable then the covariance matrix has d cross d elements. Okay. Okay. So, what is this uh, what will it show you uh, if, if uh, there are different forms of this d cross d matrix. Okay. So, the first plot here corresponds to the most general form of d by d wherein all the elements are or different. So, which means that there, there is some um, correlation between the different features that you have and what is drawn here there are let us say we are looking at two, two dimensional variable and there are x 1 and x 2 are your features. Okay. Then these lines correspond to lines of constant p d f. Okay. So, uh, then you can see that these are kind of like uh, tilted ellipses. So, this is corresponding to a full a full d cross d matrix. Okay. You have a d is a diagonal matrix and every element in the diagonal has a different value then you get um, a the lines of constant p d f will correspond to ellipses like this. And again, the major and minor axis will, will, will tell you what the um, uh, what the actual diagonal elements are. They they correspond. These these lengths would correspond to the this width would correspond to the size of the diagonal elements. Okay. The third case is when it's it's again diagonal, but then you can write the sigma squared i, where all the diagonal elements are equal. And then you have the lines of constant probability density are given by these circles. Okay, so, if you plot the locus of constant density function there will be circles. Okay. So, uh, here in the most general case it means it is all this shows is that there, there is some correlation between the variables this of this kind of tilted uh, way of drawing uh, this tilted ellipses which are these each of these lines are correspond to uh, constant uh, p d f values. Okay. So, if you plug in all the x so all, all pairs of x 1 x 2 on, on these lines evaluate to the same PDF. Okay, so that's the that's the um, uh, that's what the contours we have drawn. So because if you think about it, x1 and x2, p of x1 and x2 will be some will, will rise above the plane. Okay, and then if we just project them onto the plane, that's these are the lines we will get. We cut and project onto the line. That's these are the lines we get. Again, so there are three cases. The most general case d cross d, and d is a diagonal matrix, but each each diagonal element is different. And here again diagonal, but each of the diagonal elements are the same. 